What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the King Division Podcast. I'm your host, Cole Harris, and I'm not going to sugarcoat this. This is probably the most important episode that I think I could ever record. I've come across something in scripture over the past few months that I have never seen anyone preach about. And I, I'm truly not trying to be clickbaity or just try to captivate. This is like the most true thing I can I can, I can tell you. So I've never seen anyone preach this. And it has to do with this. Has anyone ever experienced cyclish natures to dealing with their sin? Like you try to stop doing something and you don't do it. Or you know you should do something and you don't do it. And you keep doing things that you hate doing. Right? Y'all would be shocked the amount of people. And, and I fall into this category. I used to think this. And within the last month, how many people I've talked to that we read this and we hear Paul say, I do the very thing that I hate and I don't do what I know I should do. Man, I know I should get up in the morning and read my Bible, but I can't do it. I know I shouldn't watch pornography. I know I shouldn't be angry with my brother. I know I shouldn't do X, Y, Z, but I keep on doing it. I can't break the cycle. When I would read Romans 7, I would take affirmation thank you that Paul, like I'm not by myself, Paul experiences what I experience. Paul experienced sin like I experienced sin. Could I be so kind to tell you that if you are taking affirmation from this text, you are reading it wrong? If you back up to Romans 7 verse 1 through 5 leading up to this passage, Paul says, who is a woman? What is a woman called if she is married to one man and then proceeds to marry another man while her husband is still alive. Nothing but an adulteress, right? Likewise, in Romans 7, verses 4, Likewise, my brothers, you have died to the law and you are alive to Christ. What is, what is works of the law? Works of the law is anything in you that thinks if I adhere to a moral code, if I follow these good actions, if I'm just a good person, if I do X, Y, and Z, that God will be more happy with me than if I didn't do it. That's what works of the law means, okay? You can follow works of the law literally in the Bible, the Ten Commandments, but we'll never be justified by the works of the law. But then there's a spirit of religiousness that that's what it is, is when you think that deep down in you, I can do something that would make God more happy with me. And that comes from a religious spirit, okay? Sometimes it's so subtle you don't even know you're doing it. Okay, it it hides in you and it doesn't want to be shown. But you ever notice that when you get up in the morning and you want to read your Bible and then you snooze and then you feel guilty because you didn't get up and read your Bible? Why do you feel condemned? Like, have we ever stopped and asked the question, why when I wake up and I try to read the Bible and I fall asleep, why do I feel condemned afterwards? It's because something in you thinks that if you did get up and read your Bible, God would be more happy with you. Meaning that God's love is determined by your actions. And so where does this show up in scripture? Paul literally says, right, in Romans 7 verses 1 through 5, one is a woman who who marries a man while she's still married and her husband's still alive, an adulteress. So in verse 15, Paul says, For I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree with the law that it is good. So it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Like, this is the crazy part. Paul says verbatim, if you are experiencing these things, you are in agreement with the law. In Galatians 4, I believe it says, Paul's literally, go, the, the letter to the Galatians is, why have you abandoned the original gospel that you that you first knew? Is it law and grace? By no means. Who has bewitched you? Who has confused you that your actions could earn you any favor with God? This is the gospel. A man has a son, and someone comes and he murders the son. There's three things that you could do. One would be to go kill the person that killed your son. That would be vengeance. The second thing would be to take him to court and go through the justice system. That would be justice. The third thing would be to forgive him and that would be grace this is what god did is that the same person who killed my son not only am i going to forgive you but i'm, I'm going to give you a room in my house and i'm going to give you my last name not only will i forgive you but i will give you everything that belonged to the son you killed romans 5 
says that one will scarcely, one will rarely die for a righteous person, scarcely die for a good person, but yet Christ died for us that while we were while we were still sinners. Meaning that Christ, while we were filthy, while we were disgusting, while we were nasty, while we were in the middle of our sin, said, I love you. He loved us in the middle of our worst actions. He gave us, he forgave us in the middle of our nastiness. He gave us the righteousness of Christ in the middle of of our nastiness. He said in Hosea, it likens this to Hosea 1 through 3. If y'all have never read it, go read it. It likens it to a man marrying a prostitute. If you are experiencing the cycle of wanting to read your Bible and then feeling condemned because you don't, or wanting to do something and then feeling condemned because you don't, it's because you don't understand how loved you are by God. And even more so, Paul says this. He says, Who will deliver me from this sin? Who will deliver me? Oh, wretched man that I am. Who will deliver me from this body of sin? Verse 8. The next the next verse, chapter 8, verse 1. There is thou, therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life has set you free in Christ Jesus from the law of sin and death. For God has done what the law, weakened by flesh, could not do by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us. My phone's ringing, I'm sorry. So here's a wild thought, guys. If you are experiencing a cyclist nature in your sin and in your righteousness, could it be that you are not understanding what the grace of God actually is in your life? Could it be that you don't know how loved you actually are by God? Could it be that you subtly are believing that if you do the very thing that you are doing, God will be more happy with you than if you didn't do it? I would like to challenge y'all. If y'all begin to feel condemned, if you begin to feel guilty, if you begin to feel unclean because or because of not an action, you, you must repent. Because the only basis on which we feel anything, we feel righteous, we feel holy, is the blood of Jesus. And my Bible says that he, that Christ died for me while I was yet a sinner and that I had no say, I had no say whether or not that I would be considered as righteousness or not. He just gave it to me. He said, he sent him who knew no sin, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he sent him who knew no sin to become sin so that I might become righteous. I'm as righteous as God. I am the righteousness of God. Last time I checked, I had no say in that. It was freely given and I just accepted it. And no matter how condemned I feel or no matter how condemned I try to be, I'm no, I'm not condemned and I'm not, I'm not any of the things that I try to, that, that I'm feeling because I am only righteous. I am only cleansed by the blood of the Lord. I had no say in it. Do you think it's an insult to the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit to think that you will struggle with sin for the rest of your life. Romans 6 verse 14 says, For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law, but you are under grace. You who were once slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey, either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. You were once a slave to sin. The blood of Jesus has purchased you out of sin. Imagine how silly it is for a son to continue to act like a slave. Imagine how silly it is, though we are rich, to act poor. Imagine how silly it is to be like the prodigal son in Luke 15, though he was the biological son of this, you know, he was a son of, of the father. He comes back after being in the land of the famine, uh, losing his whole inheritance, comes back saying, though he was a son, he gave his religious duty, he gave his religious spill, I'm filthy, I'm just, I, I just want to be a servant in your house, I don't even want to be, I just want to be a servant. And what does the father say? He says, go kill the fattened calf, get the ring and the robe for what my son was dead, but is now alive. My thought is, is that if we are struggling with sin, it's not to say that sometimes we won't slip up, but we have to understand why we slip up. Could it be that we act 
like orphans, though we are living in the household of God. Is me feeling like I'm an orphan leading to me falling more into sin? If you under just if you fully comprehend how much you're loved by God, you will never then strive to adhere to a moral code to try to feel righteous because you already are righteous. You will never try to feel loved because you already are loved. And so read these verses and begin when if you're struggling with sin and if you are in a cycle and even if you're not in cycles, but you just one-off sins here and then, ask yourself, like, why did I just sin? And I'm pretty sure majority of the time you'll be able to you'll be able to pinpoint that I felt condemned or I didn't feel loved. I didn't recognize my value in Jesus' eyes, in God's eyes. If I would have recognized my value to him, I wouldn't have sinned. I think those things will become more clear to you. And so, I pray this blessed you. I pray I pray this makes sense. Um, please go read these verses. I've never heard anybody preach this in my life, and it says it right there. And the and I just want to keep re- rehashing it, but I need to end this podcast. Thank you for watching. I pray this blesses you. Make sure you like, subscribe, send this to send this to friends. I know this revelation. I, I was told to title this podcast, if you want to get free from sin, watch this episode and it's not clickbait because I do feel people are going to get free from sin listening to this podcast. And so if you benefited from this and you were blessed, send it to somebody because this is truth. We don't worship God and look up in the sky at a physical location. God is spirit and truth. So when you're hearing this, I'm assuming your hearts, if you're listening, your hearts are burning because this is truth. And God is spirit and truth. And so the truth sets you free. Send this to people. People, It's time for people to get set free from, from religious bondage, thinking that we're dirty, we're filthy, and we're sinners. When God calls us a son and he calls us righteous, and uh, it's time we don't we, we understand who we are to him. And, and that will change everything about our lives. So with that being said, I'll see you on the next episode. God bless.